Praise the Lord. We're here today in the upper room of our house church, my wife and I, and I'm teaching to you the commandment of Jesus Christ. In John chapter 20, verse 19. John chapter 20, verse 19. John chapter 20, verse 19. John 20, verse 19, we read, Then the same day at evening, being the first day of the week, when the doors were shut where the disciples were assembled for fear of the Jews, came Jesus and stood in the midst and saith unto them, Peace be unto you. Jesus Christ told his disciples to have peace. Peace be unto you. Peace be unto you, Jesus said, when they were in fear of the Jews. In fear of the Jews because the Jews had just falsely accused and slandered their master, Jesus, and had put him to death on the cross. But Jesus, when he rose from the dead, he saw his disciples and commanded them to have peace. Peace be unto you. Ephesians 2, chapter 11. Ephesians chapter 2, Ephesians 2, verse 11. Excuse me. Ephesians 2, 11. Ephesians chapter 2, verse 11. Wherefore, remember that ye being in time past Gentiles in the flesh, who are called uncircumcision by that which is called the circumcision in the flesh made by hands, that at that time ye were without Christ, being aliens from the commonwealth of Israel, and strangers from the covenants of promise, having no hope, and without God in the world. But now in Christ Jesus ye who were sometimes were afar off are made nigh by the blood of Christ. For he is our peace, who hath made both one, and hath broken down the middle wall of partition between us, having abolished in his flesh the enmity, even the law of commandments contained in ordinances, for to make in himself of twain one new man, so making peace, and that he might reconcile both unto God in one body by the cross, having slain the enmity thereby, and came and preached peace to you which were afar off, and to them that were nigh. Jesus Christ is our peace. Jesus Christ, as the Jews say, of the Messiah, and why Jesus Christ is not the Messiah, they say because when Messiah comes, he will bring peace, and all men will have peace with each other, and there will be no more war. There'll be no more war. All men will have peace with each other. And that's what the true Messiah will do. Therefore, Jesus Christ is not the true Messiah. Because Jesus Christ said, I come not to bring peace, but division. So therefore they say, aha! Even Jesus himself said that he came not to bring peace, but division. Therefore, Jesus Christ is not the Messiah. Because Jesus Christ, if he were the Messiah, he failed. Because there's so much war and conflict going on, even right after his crucifixion. The destruction of the temple, wars, the Jew wars, the Romans. So Jesus Christ obviously isn't the Messiah, because the Messiah is going to bring peace on earth. He's going to bring peace on earth. But Jesus Christ, when he said that I come not to bring peace but division, came and spoke that according to foreknowledge of what would happen when he came as the suffering Messiah. As it is written, there must be a suffering Messiah to come first. And that Messiah must be killed. Daniel says that Messiah must be cut off. David said that the Messiah's soul will not be left in hell, neither will he see corruption, but he'll make his grave. Isaiah said that Messiah would be cut off because of transgressions. Isaiah 53, verse 8. Isaiah 53, verse 8. Isaiah 53, verse 8 says, He was taken from prison and from judgment, 
And who shall declare his generation? For he was cut off out of the land of the living. For the transgression of my people was he stricken. And he made his grave with the wicked and with the rich in death, because he had done no violence, neither was any deceit in his mouth. Jesus Christ said that I come not to bring peace, but division. He said that according to his foreknowledge. He knew the future. That Messiah would be killed. That he would separate families. That some would say that he was Messiah and some would say that he wasn't. Therefore there would be division. And because of this division he would be killed. He would suffer and be killed. Be cut off from the land of the living. Jesus Christ makes peace not with the wicked. So the Jew thinks that when Messiah comes, all of these people who are wicked are just going to stop being wicked? No. Jesus Christ says that I have not come to cause peace, but division. Division. For those who repent, those who repent and put their trust and faith in Him will have peace. But unto the wicked, God said, those who keep on, keep on denying God, their Messiah, who put their Messiah to death, will have no peace. There is no peace, saith my God, unto the wicked. Therefore, Jesus says, that I come not to bring peace, but division. But, now in Christ Jesus, in Christ Jesus, ye who are sometimes afar off are made nigh by the blood of Christ. For he is our peace, who hath made both one, and hath broken down the middle wall of partition between us. Peace, peace, peace with God, the Gentiles, peace with the Jew, those believing Jews, not the unbelieving Jews, no. For the disciples who believed were in fear of the Jews, but Jesus said, peace be unto you, peace be unto you. And those Jews would later go and convert Gentiles to the faith. Because those Jews, those disciples of Jesus Christ, went into all the world and preached the gospel to the Gentiles. Taking down the wall, Paul writes, who had broken down the middle wall of partition between us, having abolished in his flesh the enmity, even the law of commandments contained in ordinances, for to making himself of twain one new man, so making peace, and that he might reconcile both unto God in one body on the cross. He reconciled the Jew and the Greek to God. Not the Jew only, not the Gentile only, not the Greek only, but both, reconciling both to God. Peace be unto you. Jesus Christ brings peace. Psalm 148, verse 14. Psalm 148, verse 14. Psalm 148, verse 14. Psalm 148, verse 14, and it's peace in Him alone. Psalm 148, verse 14, He also exalted the horn of His people, the praise of all His saints, even of the children of Israel, a people near unto Him. Praise ye the Lord. Praise ye the Lord. The children of Israel, He preached peace to them who are afar off and to those who are nigh, Paul said. Those near children unto him, the children of Israel, he preached peace to them. But many would not accept it. And he was cut off out of the land of the living. Ephesians 2.19, let's go back there. Ephesians chapter 2, verse 19. Ephesians chapter 2, verse 19. Ephesians 2.19. Now therefore ye are no more strangers and foreigners, but fellow citizens with the saints and of the household of God. With the household of God. Jesus Christ brings that peace, brings that peace with God. You can have peace with God in Jesus Christ and in Him alone. 1 John, what does it mean to be in Jesus Christ? How can I have peace in Jesus Christ? 1 John chapter 3, what does it mean to be in Jesus Christ? 1 John chapter 3 verse 1, Behold what manner of love the Father hath bestowed upon us that we should be called the sons of God. Therefore the world knoweth us not, because it knew Him not. 
Beloved, now are we the sons of God, and it doth not yet appear what we shall be, but we know that when he shall appear, we shall be like him, for we shall see him as he is. The world knoweth us not. The world knoweth us not. Let's turn. Let's turn. John 16, verse 2. John 16, verse 2. Jesus says, what does, it mean to, what does it mean to be in Christ Jesus and have peace? What does it mean to be in Christ? First John, excuse me, John chapter 16, verse 2. John 16, 2. John 16, verse 2. They shall put you out of the synagogues, yea. The time cometh that whosoever killeth you will think that he doeth God's service. And these things will they do unto you because they have not known the Father nor me. They have not known the Father nor me, so they'll put you out of the synagogues and kill you. Because they don't know me. They don't know the Father. 1 John chapter 5, verse 18. 1 John chapter 5, verse 18. What does it mean to be in Jesus? 1 John chapter 5, verse 18. 1 John 5, 18. We know that whosoever is born of God sinneth not, but he that is begotten of God keepeth himself, and that wicked one touches him not. So, whosoever is born of God, whosoever is begotten of God, the children of God, the sons of God, sinneth not, and keep themselves, and the wicked one, Satan, touches them not. What does it mean to be in Christ Jesus? What does it mean to be a child of God? What does it mean to have peace with God, being His children, through faith in Jesus Christ? What does it mean to be in Jesus Christ? Verse 19, And we know that we are of God, John says, and the whole world lieth in wickedness. And we know that the Son of God has come and has given us an understanding, that we may know Him that is true. And we are in Him that is true. So Jesus said, The time will come that they'll put you out of the synagogues and kill you. Because they don't know me, and they don't know the Father. John says that we may know Him. He's given us an understanding. That we may know Him, that is true. And we are in Him, that is true. Even in His Son, Jesus Christ. This is the true God and eternal life. What does it mean to be in God? What does it mean to be in Christ? It means that you're not wicked. That you're not in the world. You're not in the world, for the whole world lieth in wickedness, John says. Read it again. We know that whosoever is born of God sinneth not, but he that is begotten of God keepeth himself, and that wicked one touches him not. And we know that we are of God, and the whole world lieth in wickedness. And we know that the Son of God has come and has given us an understanding that we may know him that is true, and we are in him that is true, even in his Son Jesus Christ. This is the true God and eternal life. For the world passes away and the lust thereof. But they that do the will of God will endure forever. This is the true God. To be in Christ is to be out of the world. For the world is wicked. We're not of the world. We're not of the world. Therefore they put you out of the synagogues and they'll kill you thinking they do God's service because they don't know God. But God says... Through John, that the Son of God has come, has given us an understanding that we may know Him that is true. And we are in Him that is true. So there's no peace to the wicked who don't know Jesus Christ. Who don't know Him. There is no peace to them. There is no peace to them. Because if you sin, you're not of God. If you sin, you're not of God. Sinneth. We know that whosoever is born of God sinneth not. Not of God. If you're sinning, you're not of God. We know that whosoever is born of God sinneth not. Not in God. Because the world is in wickedness. Sinners are in the world. And they're wicked. Romans chapter 9, verse 3. Romans 9, verse 3. So we have peace in Christ. Romans 9, 3, not in the world. Romans 9, 3. For I could wish that myself were accursed for, from Christ for my brethren, my kinsmen according to the flesh. 
who are Israelites, to whom pertaineth the adoption, and the glory, and the covenants, and the giving of the law, and the service of God, and the promises, whose are the fathers, and of whom, as concerning the flesh, Christ came, who is over all, God blessed forever. Amen. Not as though the word of God had taken of none effect, for they are not all Israel which are of Israel. They are not all Israel which are of Israel. They who put you out of the synagogues, they who you're in fear of, the Jews, as his disciples were, though they were Jewish, his disciples were Jewish. They were in fear of the Jews, but Paul says that not all those, not all those, let me read it here, not all of Israel which are of Israel, for they are not all Israel which are of Israel. Neither, Paul says, because they are the seed of Abraham, are they all children. But in Isaac shall thy seed be called. That is, they which are the children of the flesh, these are not the children of God. But the children of the promise are counted for the seed. They that are of the children of the flesh are not the children of God. For we know that the children of God sin not, and the whole world lieth in wickedness. They that are of the flesh are not the children of God. Paul speaking of those who are not of the spirit, who are not of the promise, who are not of the faith, but those who are of the flesh, the circumcision of the flesh, those who live in the flesh, who live in the world, who rely on the circumcision of the foreskin. Those Jews who are under the Mosaic law are not the children of God. For the children of God are those who have peace with God. And the children of God are those who are born of God. And if you're born of God, then you're not a killer. If you're born of God, then there's no reason for the disciple of Jesus Christ to fear you. If you're in Christ Jesus, if you're a son of God, then you have peace because you're in Him and you're not in the world. You're not in the world. But the children of the promise are counted for seed. They which are the children of the flesh, they are not the children of God. Not all that are Israel are Israel, Paul says. Not all that are Abraham's seed are, are actually children of Abraham. The children of the flesh, these are not the children of God. The children of the promise are counted for the seed. Galatians chapter 4, verse 28. Galatians 4, 28. Galatians chapter 4, verse 28. Now we, brethren, as Isaac was, are the children of promise. Children of promise. We, as Isaac were, are the children of promise. Not children of the flesh under the law of Moses. Under the law, the circumcision of the flesh. But the children of promise... For Jesus Christ came, Messiah came, and he preached to those who were near, the children of Israel, and to those who are far off. And he preached that promise to all, breaking down the wall that was between us. Galatians chapter 13, verse 17. Excuse me, Galatians chapter 3, verse 17. Galatians 3, 17. And this I say that the covenant which was confirmed before of God in Christ, the law which was 430 years after, cannot disannul. The covenant given to Abraham, the law which came, the law of Moses, 430 years later, cannot disannul that covenant which God made with Abraham, that it should make the promise of none effect. For if the inheritance be of the law, it is no more of promise, but God gave it to Abraham by promise. It's not the law of Moses that makes you a child of God. It's the faith of Abraham, the covenant with Abraham that makes you a child of God, not the covenant of Moses. The covenant of Moses, the oath, let's read it here, no, the covenant that he gave to Abraham. Moses was 430 years later. And Moses' law, Moses' covenant, does not make the covenant God swore to Abraham of none effect. The covenant of the promise that in all, that, nation, that many nations would be blessed from Abraham. Luke chapter 1, Luke chapter 1, verse 72, Luke 172, Luke 172. 
to perform the mercy promised to our fathers and to remember his holy covenant, the oath which he swore to our father Abraham, the oath which he swore to our father Moses. No, the oath which he swear to our father Abraham, Moses being 430 years later. The oath that he swore to Abraham is the promise, not Moses, not the law of Moses. The law of Moses does not lead to life as the Jews think today. Even today, they think that Moses, that Moses, his law will lead them to life. And it's not Moses. No. It's not Moses. Deuteronomy, in the covenant that God promised to Abraham that he would be the father of Israel. No. That he would be the father of many nations. Not only Israel, but also the Gentiles, the heathen, who would come to his light, the light of God. Deuteronomy 7.12, the covenant which he swore to Abraham. Deuteronomy 7.12. Deuteronomy chapter 7, verse 12, where it, excuse me, to Moses, Wherefore it shall come to pass, if ye hearken to these judgments, and keep and do them, that the Lord thy God shall keep unto thee the covenant and the mercy which he sware unto thy fathers. So Moses said, If ye keep my covenant, then he will keep the covenant that he sware to you to Abraham. If ye keep my covenant. If ye keep my covenant, then you get that mercy, that covenant with Abraham. Moses said, if you keep my covenant, let's read it, that the Lord thy God, excuse me, when, when, wherefore, verse 12, excuse me, verse 11, Deuteronomy 7, 11, thou shalt therefore keep the commandments, Moses said, and the statutes and the judgments which I command thee this day to do them 430 years after Abraham. Wherefore it shall come to pass, if ye hearken to these judgments, and keep and do them, that the Lord thy God shall keep unto thee the covenant and the mercy which he sware unto thy fathers, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. If ye keep Moses' law, God will keep Abraham's covenant with you, Moses said. Deuteronomy 28, verse 15. Deuteronomy 28, verse 15. But it shall come to pass, Moses said, if thou wilt not hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy God to observe to do all his commandments and his statutes, which I command thee this day, that all these curses shall come upon thee and overtake thee. Cursed shalt thou be in the city, and cursed thou shalt be in the field, etc., etc., all the curses. If you don't keep the law of Moses. So what is it then? We know that the law of Moses was broken. Therefore, those who still preach and put their faith in the law of Moses, that covenant which they break, they are under the curse. They do not have the promises sworn to the fathers, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. If you keep the law and the commandments, Moses said, then you will have the covenant that God gave to our fathers. But if you don't do the law, then you are under the curse. So they foolishly, in their error, in their folly, today profess Moses, knowing that they don't keep Moses. That they don't keep Moses. Therefore they are under the curse and blind. Blind, not knowing it. Knowing it deep down, though. For their conscience bears them witness that they do not keep the law of Moses. As it is written in the scriptures, therefore they have extra biblical writings, rabbis, great sages that they listen to, to explain away to their doom why they don't have to necessarily do this and do that in Moses today. They explain it away through their rabbis and sages, even today, preaching and putting their faith in the law of Moses. Their faith in the law of Moses. Though Moses said clearly, if you don't keep my law, if you don't keep my law, then you don't have the promise of Abraham, and you are not the children of God. You are not the children of God. Galatians 3.10 Galatians chapter 3 verse 10 Galatians chapter 3 verse 10 And if you're not the children of God, 
If you're not the children of God, beloved, we know that we are the sons of God and the whole world lieth in wickedness. If you're not the children of God, then you're wicked. You're wicked and under the curse. You're wicked and under the curse. Galatians chapter 3, verse 10. For as many as are of the works of the law are under the curse. For it is written, Cursed is everyone that continueth not in all things which are written in the book of the law to do them. Cursed are those who are not doing everything that is written in the law of Moses. Jeremiah chapter 1. Jeremiah chapter 11, excuse me, verse 1. Jeremiah 11, 1. So the Jews today who are under the law of Moses and don't keep the law of Moses are cursed. Jeremiah 11. And are not the children of God, though not all Israel are Israel, Paul said. Neither are they that are all Abraham's seed are the children of Abraham. No. No. For if you are under the law of Moses, rejecting Jesus Christ, who brings that peace, who brings that peace, your Messiah, that's the whole purpose of Messiah, is to redeem you from the curse of the law. If you reject the Messiah, then you remain cursed. Jeremiah 11, verse 1. Jeremiah 11, verse 1. The word that came to Jeremiah from the Lord, saying, Hear ye the words of this covenant, and speak unto the men of Judah, and to the inhabitants of Jerusalem, and say thou unto them, Thus saith the Lord God of Israel, Cursed be the man that obeyeth not the words of this covenant, which I commanded your fathers in the day that I brought them forth out of the land of Egypt with Moses, from the iron furnace, saying, Obey my voice, and do them according to all which I command you. So shall ye be my people, and I will be your God, that I may perform the oath which I have sworn unto your fathers. If ye keep the law, Jeremiah confirmed what Moses wrote in Deuteronomy, if ye keep the law, then I'll keep my oath with you that I swear unto Abraham. But if ye don't keep my law, then you're under the curse Cursed be the man that obey not the words of this covenant, which I commanded your fathers in the day that I brought them forth out of the land of Egypt, speaking of Moses and Sinai, from the iron furnace, saying, Obey my voice and do them according to all which I command you. So shall ye be my people, and I will be your God. If you keep the law that he gave to Moses, I will be your God. But if you don't, then you're not the children of God. You're cursed. Therefore, that I might perform the oath which I have sworn unto your fathers, to give them a land flowing with milk and honey, as it is this day. Then answered I and said, So be it, O Lord. Proclaim all, then the Lord said unto me, Proclaim all these words in the cities of Judah and in the streets of Jerusalem, saying, Hear ye the words of this covenant, and do them. For I earnestly protested unto your fathers in the day that I brought them up out of the land of Egypt. Even unto this day, rising early and protesting, saying, Obey my voice. Yet they obeyed not, nor inclined their ear, but walked every one in the imagination of their evil heart. Wicked! The whole world lieth in wickedness. Therefore I will bring upon them all the words of this covenant which I commanded them to do. But they did them not. They did them not. They are under the curse. And they don't have the promise God swore to Abraham. They don't have it. They're not the children of God. Ezekiel 20. Well, this is a very woeful thing, preacher. Ezekiel 20. Ezekiel chapter 20. Ezekiel 20, verse 33. Ezekiel 20, verse 33. Ezekiel 20, 33. As I live, saith the Lord God, surely with a mighty hand and with a stretched out arm and with fury poured out, I will rule over you and I will bring you out from the people and will gather you out of the countries wherein ye are scattered with a mighty hand and with a stretched out arm and with fury poured out. 
and I will bring you into the wilderness of the people, and there will I plead with you face to face. Like as I pleaded with your fathers in the wilderness of the land of Egypt, so will I plead with you, saith the Lord God. The Lord God said that he would come and he would plead with them face to face. He would plead with them face to face the same way he did in the land of Egypt. When he pleaded with Moses face to face. He would come and he would plead with them face to face. And he says, and I will plead with you face to face. And I will bring you into the wilderness of the people. And there will I plead with you face to face. And God came and pled with them face to face. Jesus Christ saying, repent. Repent. Preaching in their synagogues. Pleading with them face to face. Repent and be converted. That your sins may be blotted out. Jesus Christ pleading face to face, the Messiah of God, who is God in flesh, the Redeemer of Israel, pled face to face, and for it he was cut off, he was despised, he was rejected of men, a man of sorrows, and he was cut off from the land of the living. Jeremiah 33, verse 2. Jeremiah 33, verse 2. Jeremiah 33, verse 2. Jeremiah 33, verse 2. Thus saith the Lord, the maker thereof, the Lord that formed it to establish it. The Lord is his name. Call unto me, and I will answer thee, and show thee great and mighty things which thou knowest not. For thus saith the Lord, the God of Israel, concerning the houses of this city, and concerning the houses of the kings of Judah, which are thrown down by the mounts and by the sword. They come to fight with the Chaldeans, but it is to fill them with the dead bodies of men whom I have slain in my anger and in my fury for all whose wickedness I have hid my face from the city. Behold, I will bring it health and cure, and I will cure them and will reveal unto them the abundance of peace and of truth. I will reveal unto them the abundance of peace and of truth. And I will cause the captivity of Judah and the captivity of Israel to return, and will build them as at the first. And I will cleanse them from all their inequity, whereby they have sinned against me. And I will pardon all their inequities, whereby they have sinned and whereby they have transgressed against me. I will pardon all their inequities. When? After he slays the wicked from out of the land. That's what they forget. That's what they forget. They think Messiah was supposed to come and just bring peace and all the wicked people would all of a sudden just become peaceful? No. There will be no more wicked when Messiah comes. For the sinner shall be consumed from out of the earth and the wicked shall be no more on the day of the Lord. They'll be destroyed in flaming fire. There won't be any wicked walking around who just say, well, the Messiah is here, magically I'm not wicked anymore. No, no. Jesus Christ came, the Messiah came, and those wicked did not repent. They killed him as it was written, but some did. He caused a vision. He caused a vision. And when he comes again, he will smite the land out of all the wicked, Jeremiah 31, and he will forgive all their iniquities, those who have faith. Jeremiah 31, verse 33, let's read it. Jeremiah 31, 33. You see, some of the Messianic scriptures are speaking of when Jesus came the first time, and some of them, the next very next verse, will be speaking about when he comes again. And the Jews just don't get it. The Jews just don't get it when they read the scriptures. Jeremiah 31, verse 33. See if I can find it here. Jeremiah 31, 33. Jeremiah 31, verse 33. 
Jeremiah 31, 33, Behold, the days come, saith the Lord, that I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and with the house of Judah, not according to the covenant that I made with their fathers in the day that I took them by the hand to bring them out of the land of Egypt, which my covenant they break, although I was a husband unto them, saith the Lord. But this shall be the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel. After those days, saith the Lord, I will put my law in their inward parts and write it in their hearts and will be their God. And they shall be my people. And they shall teach no more every man his neighbor and every man his brother, saying, Know the Lord. For they shall all know me from the least of them unto the greatest of them, saith the Lord. For I will forgive their iniquity and I will remember their sins no more. John 6, verse 44, Jesus says, John 6, verse 44, John 6, 44, John 6, 44. No man can come to me except the Father which hath sent me draw him, and I will raise him up at the last day. It is written in the prophets, and they shall be all taught of God. Every man therefore that hath heard and hath learned of the Father cometh unto me. And they shall be all taught of God. I will raise him up at the last day, Jesus says. I will raise him up at the last day. And what? They shall be all taught of God. Every man therefore that hath heard and hath learned unto the Father cometh to me. Every man that hath heard and hath learned of the Father cometh to me, and I will raise them up on the last day, and they shall all be taught of God. No one will say, Know the Lord, for everyone will know the Lord, for there will be no more wicked on the earth. The wicked will be destroyed, burned in the day of the Lord. And then, Isaiah 54, verse 13. Isaiah 54, 13. Isaiah 54, verse 13. And all thy children shall be taught of the Lord, and great shall be the peace of thy children. All thy children shall be taught of the Lord, and great shall be the peace of thy children. When? When Jesus raises them up on the last day. And it says in verse 12, And I will make thy windows of agates, and thy gates of carbuncles, and all thy borders of pleasant stones, speaking of the new Jerusalem which comes down from heaven. And in that day all thy children shall be taught of the Lord, and great shall be the peace of thy children. Isaiah 11, 9. Isaiah 11, 9. They shall not hurt nor destroy in all my holy mountain, for the earth shall be full of the knowledge of the Lord as the waters cover the sea. Isaiah 60, verse 18. Isaiah 60, 18, Violence shall no more be heard in thy land, wasting nor destruction within thy borders, but thou shalt call thy walls salvation. Thou shalt call thy walls salvation, and thy gates praise. The sun shall be no more thy light by day, neither for brightness shall the moon give light unto thee, but the Lord shall be unto thee an everlasting light, and thy God thy glory. The sun shall no more go down, Neither shall thy moon withdraw itself. For the Lord shall be thine everlasting light, and the days of thy morning shall be ended. Thy people shall be all righteous. Thy people shall be all righteous when he comes again. For he was cut off the first time. Thy people shall be all righteous. They shall inherit the land forever. The branch of my planting the work of my hands, that I may be glorified. Psalm 37, verse 22. Psalm 37, verse 22. Now remember, the Jews are cursed because they follow after the law and they don't do the law. But those who are of the seed of Abraham, the faith of Abraham, Psalm 37, verse 22 who are born of God, depart from evil and do good and dwell forevermore. Depart from evil and do good and dwell forevermore. For the Lord loveth judgment and forsaketh not his saints. They are preserved forever, but the seed of the wicked shall be cut off. 
the righteous shall inherit the land and dwell therein forever. The righteous shall inherit the land and dwell therein forever. Verse 22, for such as be blessed of him shall inherit the earth and they that be cursed of him shall be cut off. They that do not all those things which are in the law of Moses are cursed, are wicked. They reject Messiah, Jesus Christ. Therefore, if they continue in this manner, putting their faith and hope in the law of Moses, if they continue to live under the works of the law, rejecting their Messiah, Jesus Christ the righteous, who says, I will raise them up at the last day. If they reject that peace with God, which is found only in Jesus Christ, not in the world, not in wickedness. If they reject, if they reject all these things, they remain cursed and they shall not inherit the earth. For such as be blessed of him shall inherit the earth. And they that be cursed of him shall be cut off. Are you under the law today? You're cursed. Repent in Jesus Christ's name I pray. Amen. Let's sing the doxology. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise him all creatures here below. Praise him above ye heavenly hosts. Praise Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. Amen. Praise the Lord.